Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're going to have a fun little video. I got Touch Designer open, but I don't know if you notice anything different. Dun, 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 dun. This is the Mac version of Touch Designer. I'm going to give you my thoughts after having used it for about a week. I'm going to tell you the pros, the cons, who it might be good for, and who might want to still end up making their way towards the Windows version. So I'm running on a M2 MacBook Air, as you can see here. Uh, it's a machine I've just started testing, working with, seeing how these M2 chips are and the M chips in general. Let me say I'm color me impressed because this computer doesn't get hot, doesn't have a fan and runs everything really, really snappy. I can't complain, but I wanted to see what is it like if I run Touch Designer, which is something I've been running on Windows professionally for more than a decade now. So. First things first, let me tell you a little bit about what works inside of Touch Designer. And the really amazing thing and what really impressed me is that most things do work. I was able to work on a project, do a lot of scripting, wrote a couple hundred lines of Python code. As you can see here, the way I have this even set up now is that I have a screen grab top capturing my Mac desktop, sending it over NDI to my PC desktop running OBS doing the recording. We'll come back and talk about that in a second in the cons section. You can even see most of your favorite effects are probably going to work. I've just got really simple things here. There's examples from the palette, waveform monitors, even things like particles GPU, which is a very GPU focused type of activity are working here. Now, one thing I'll notice about this, which is what we're going to talk about is this idea of the thermal throttling. We'll come back to that. But you can see a lot of these effects are natively working. Even things that are complex like render picking, user interfaces that you might be using in VR, although VR headsets and those things are really not a Mac environment friendly type of activity. And we can see even visual effects, push pins, instancing. I think for most people, the core functionality of Touch Designer does work incredibly well on Mac. And not only does it work well on Mac, I think it takes really good advantage of the hardware. We can see here that even on a MacBook Air, I'm holding 60 FPS, running this push pins with this render picking, 3D rendered environment running. Uh, all kinds of things are happening on my machine behind the scenes as well. And you can even see here in my system stats, uh, I'm only using not even 50% of my CPU power, maybe about 30% of my GPU power, 25% of my GPU power. Now, what you'll notice is that my laptop is starting to get hot. And I think this is one of the things that is going to become a tricky thing for folks that are going to be using Touch Designer on Mac a lot, especially if you don't have the MacBook Pros, the 14 or 16 inch with fans and thermal capabilities, you will probably start to see some form of thermal throttling happen after you've been working hard inside a Touch Designer for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or if you're doing really heavy effects that are kind of pushing the GPU in any kind of way, those kind of things are going to start becoming limiting factors. But as you can see now, I'm still holding 70, 71 degrees, which is cooler than what my PC normally runs at in idle, basically. Uh, and I'm still holding my 60 FPS in this demo project. I think one of the really amazing things is that all of the new features that we're seeing inside of Touch Designer on Windows are also coming on the Mac side of things. So in most cases, you are going to find a feature parity. So for example, point cloud workflows are becoming very, very kind of ubiquitous, used all across the industry. And these things run really great and smoothly on our uh, Mac setup here. You can see I've got the banana point cloud loaded in and even changing the sizes of the instances in real time. Uh, and let me see, I don't even remember how many. What do we got here? That's 50,000 instances, basically. And I'm able to change those sizes in that render in real time, holding that 60 FPS. Especially for folks working in audio, Mac has always been a place where producers, musicians, and all those kinds of folks love working with their audio. Even things like the VST Chop uh, recently have been introduced back into the Mac OS version. You can see here I've just got a simple TDR Nova EQ that I kind of like using, loaded up, and that works just as you'd expect inside of Touch Designer. So there's a lot of really, really good stuff happening inside of Touch Designer on Mac. Now, let me tell you a little bit about some of the things that don't work and some of the things that you want to be careful of. So one of the things that you really want to be careful of is when it comes to what I would consider more intermediate and advanced user features. And a lot of these things have to do either with hardware, 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 either with hardware or with specific GPU workloads. 
And what I mean by those specific GPU workloads, even more specifically, is NVIDIA only processes. So when we're talking about things like Kinect cameras, Leap Motions, a lot of VR devices, uh, I'm not going to name specifics because I don't do a ton of VR work, but I know a lot of headsets don't even support Mac OS out of the box. Uh, you might be able to get through with some middleware. But when we're starting to talk about all these different SDKs to plug different devices in, which is one of the reasons why a lot of folks come to Touch Designer, that's where you're really going to start to feel some of the limitations. And it's really not something that is the, the fault of Touch Designer or Derivative themselves. It's a lot of these hardware manufacturers find that the pace that which Mac OS develops and deprecates, which basically means throws away the features they had last year. They're like, no, we got some new stuff. Every, everything you thought that worked last year, you better fix it. Uh, a lot of developers of hardware find that that's too hard to keep up with, not worth the, the cost for them. And that's why you see a lot of hardware is Windows only. And especially the Kinect is, a, is probably a great example of that. Going on to the NVIDIA stuff, you're going to see that these tools are becoming so ubiquitous in our industry. Um, and, you know, the hope is as the industry kind of evolves and more machine learning and AI processing becomes normal, you're going to see a lot of these tools come over to whether it's the metal system, whether it's a Vulkan that can then be translated into metal on a, on a Mac or be kind of optimized to also run on Mac systems. But for now, a lot of these things really are kind of the proprietary juice and, and secret sauce of NVIDIA, keeping their stock prices up and all that good business. But you're really going to find that's going to be a limiting factor if you're interested in those kind of techniques and features, which for people that are maybe are doing stuff that's virtual production related or broadcast related, that's going to kind of be a showstopper. And like I said at the beginning, the reason I have this set up to have my screen grab sent over NDI to my Windows machine is not because my Mac couldn't do the screen recording at the same time. Actually, I was very impressed that I could run Touch Designer, run everything in this project and be recording my screen and still holding 60 FPS on Touch Designer and having that 30 FPS recording coming out in HD. But the problem was when I tried to do background subtraction for my camera without the NVIDIA broadcast, I was just really not happy with the result. I even paid $10 for an app that had some machine learning thing built into it just to see, you know, would this be kind of something that I can enjoy and work with. And at the end of the day, I found it was really not that good of a quality compared to what I'm used to when I'm using NVIDIA broadcast app inside of my Windows machine. So at that point, I was like, you know what? This is actually just going to be much better for me to take advantage of the best parts of both systems, be able to record this video natively on the Mac and send that stream of texture back to my Windows machine where I have my nice kind of cutout and be able to do that recording. So that's just one example, but it's a real world example that I experienced uh, in my kind of usage of this Mac system on the first week that I've been using it. Now, aside from that, the system performs really well. And I think this is where the question that I always get asked becomes important. It's, can I run Touch Designer on Mac? Should I buy a new laptop that's a Windows laptop? And these are frankly hard questions to answer and they're going to require some personal reflection, but I can give you my two cents and my recommendations. First of all, if you're just starting Touch Designer, you're just beginning your journey, getting into making some content, having fun, learning operators, following tutorials on YouTube or in the HQ Pro from your favorite creators and all that good stuff. Definitely just start with what you have. Do the biggest mistake you could do is start learning Touch Designer and immediately go out and spend a bunch of hard earned money on a new system. If you're just making content, you're just getting into doing some fun stuff, you can definitely learn and probably even use Touch Designer for quite a bit of time on Mac OS. So if that's the archetype of who you are, I'm learning Touch Designer, I'm just starting my journey, whatever system you have, Mac or PC, is going to be great. Use it, have fun, you're going to love it. Now, the branch starts to happen as you get more into the intermediate stages of your skills, your abilities, your projects, the type of content you want to create. And this is where you got to start to make a little bit of decisions. I would say for most folks who are thinking to themselves, you know, I've been using Touch Designer for six months, eight months, a year. I'm starting to get to that point where I've made a bunch of stuff myself already on either my Mac system. And in this case, we'll just say I've made a bunch of stuff on my Mac system. Now I want to start looking forward to getting a job in this industry as a touch designer, artist and developer. If that's your archetype, I think you'll probably either have to a 
borrow a friend's PC for a little bit just to get used to some of those features that are PC only, or B, invest in a secondary machine, or consider migrating over to Windows full time. I mean, I used to be a Mac user back in the day, and this is the first Mac I've owned in about eight years. It's nice to, to use, of course, but using a Windows PC is not that bad at all. I mean, I've, I've been doing it daily for eight years and it's been totally fine. But that's because for a long time, the main core of my day-to-day -day activity was diving into Dutch Designer and using intermediate advanced features and video-only features, GPU stuff, connecting to hardware. That was kind of my job. And it didn't make sense for me to not have access to those things on a daily basis. Now, in a lot of cases, I should say, when you do get a job in this industry, you're probably gonna be working on somebody else's computer in a lot of cases, especially if you get a job at a bigger company. But I think even when you get to those places, you'll be working on Windows again. You're not gonna get a job at a Moment Factory or MSG or any of these kind of big companies and roll into the office and start working on Touch Designer on Mac. Now, you could definitely work on it at home, but just know that in our industry, the deployments are still always on the Windows side of things. So, if that's your archetype, you're thinking to yourself, I really love this, been doing it for a year, I wanna move into more professional context, become a developer full time, that's when I would start to suggest, you know what, start to think to yourself, should I get a secondary system that's, you know, I use my Mac for my day to day stuff, but when I'm doing touch designer stuff, either I have a laptop with a 3060 or even a 3070 or something like that, like you don't have to go full tilt and get a 3090 Ti or anything like that, definitely not but just having something that gives you access to all that hardware through the Windows system and all of those NVIDIA only features. Now, if you're somebody who is more of an artist and you're thinking to yourself, I like using Touch Designer, but I'm mostly gonna be doing artworks. I'm not really going to be doing kind of professional development. I'm not gonna become a developer. Then that path opens up a little bit because maybe then you can make trade-offs and say, you know what? I'm perfectly happy using Touch Designer on Mac, but I just know that the limitation I have is I can't connect XYZ piece of hardware. I'm not gonna have things like background subtraction, probably not gonna have AI capabilities that are NVIDIA specific only. You're not gonna get access to things like the simulations, like the smoke and the water and the fluid simulations and the particles and all this kind of fun stuff. But I can make do with what I have in front of me and you can consider that another kind of artistic boundary. So with that said, I think the Mac version of Touch Designer it's incredibly well made. I've been having a lot of fun using it. It is very well performing. I've also been really impressed with the Mac OS hardware in general. You can see I got touch running and this whole thing is, is running at 60 degrees right now, which, which I jokingly said, but actually serious, it is cooler than what my Windows Razer PC idles in. But you can also see that enabling kind of any really intensive workflow is starts to crank that heat right up immediately, which is probably gonna lead to some form of throttling. So with that said, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, this is a question I get a, asked a ton of times. Can I use Touch Designer Mac? How is it? Should I buy a Windows PC? Uh, and hopefully these give you a little bit of answers and guidance, because I think it's a great platform on the Mac OS. Definitely is usable for most people. And maybe as you start to get into that career development slash orientation, that might be the appropriate time to start thinking about that. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.